uh, sample, a large sample, multiple epic, uh, near Fred set of observations, and as a graduate student, I did not want to have to take this data myself. And that's where 2MAS comes into the story. Now, the 2MAS was an all sky, multi beta near Fred survey taken over roughly four years. And the 2MAS mission did not you know, have a large number of epics uh, covering the whole sky. But in order to calibrate the all sky survey, they selected a series of 35 calibration fields. Uh, 26 at high galactic latitudes, covering roughly four square degrees in the sky. Each of these fields was observed in more than 500 to 3,500 times over the duration of four years. And groups of observations were taken in uh, approximately 10 minutes of real time with one field visited every hour. Net result is that each field was typically visited once per night, roughly three months out of the year. And the final bullet point that I'd like to emphasize is that this data is now public. It was released less than a month ago. And I am only scratching the surface about what can be done with this database. Uh, there's extra galactic sources, young stellar objects, plenty to be done. And it's an unprecedented look, both in terms of depth, if you co-add all the data, and in terms of variability in time series analysis of the near infrared sky. So I encourage you to go take a look at that. <coughs> so from this database, I wanted to select our dwarfs. They use a rather loose set of criteria, H minus K greater than 0.2 from their point source catalog colors, and I identified a sample of 5,600 objects. Uh, and there's a lot of sample contaminants as a result of the color section criteria, including galaxies, uh, evolved stars, and earlier type stars that leak in due to the photometric uncertainty in the point source catalog. And so we left those in my sample because we want to see what we find. <coughs> And uh, from this, roughly about 1,600 or 2,000 of them are We'll talk a little about that later. So what does the data look like? Here's a sample light curve. Uh, it's a very rather fundamental plot. But what I want to tell you is that the, the photometric scatters approximately galaxies. So we can use that piece of information to uh, characterize the variability of the source of the Since we didn't know what we were going to find in this database, uh, we didn't restrict what kinds of variability that we could identify. And to identify variability on a wide range of amplitudes and time scales, I chose a set of three different criteria, which are complementary. The first is simply looking at the photometric scatter and asking, is this bigger than what would be expected for a star that, or an object of that apparent magnitude? This happens to be a you know, quasar, quite variable. And this uh, technique is sensitive to small amplitudes of variability that occur frequently. The second technique look for individual sets of observations taken together that were statistically deviant uh, from the average of parent magnitude, such as might be expected for a transit. And so this is good at picking up uh, sort of uh, short-term variations. And finally, we chose a, a multi-band index called Stetson index to look at correlations between the bands to pick up stuff that the other two indices might miss. 